Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and today's topic is going to be generated around the question, what are bath salts? Now this is part of our bigger series of deep dive into different classes of stimulants and we started with uh, four videos ago as a general introduction and then we moved to the plant Katha edulis and our last video was four weeks ago, I am sorry, we should be done by now. But we, we are continuing with the series and this goes right along with the last video. If you are watching this video for the first time, it should absolutely stand alone on its own. But once you go through this whole thing and once it's all said and done with all of the uh, topics we will cover, uh, you will really, really gain a different understanding and have a handle on the substances discussed, hopefully in a, a much stronger and a concrete way than you did before. If you are new to the channel, my name is Dr. B with Dr. B Addiction Recovery. This is a nonprofit endeavor. If you like our content, please go ahead, subscribe and like. We also have a really cool Patreon account and channel membership. Thank you, thank you for those that are contributing. We have created this out of our own pocket and uh, as little as $3 a month helps us uh, create very regular and hopefully better content for you as time goes. Let's get started. What are bath salts, okay? In 2007, okay, a new class of designer drugs known as synthetic cathinones emerged in Europe, okay? Not long after that, reports of synthetic cathinone use, abuse, toxicity, overdoses, death began to pop up in different places in continental US. And this rise was a sort of explosive, alarming uh, calls at poison centers from, I believe, 2006 to 2011, went to zero, 300, and then somewhere like 6,000 by 2011, okay? About 96, 97, 98% of uh, synthetic cathinones first identified by toxico uh, toxicological investigations showed uh, the, a few substances and these included methadrone and they also included MDPV and they also included methylone, okay? And uh, of all these cases, uh, the 6,000 of them, about 98% of them, the toxicology reports showed those three substances, okay? These fall in the class of what later became to be called first generation bath salts, okay? And uh, this designation is more formal for those uh, in the science, in the clinical sciences, in law enforcement policy, first generation bath salts is what they came to be known eventually, okay? These bath salts that had, the, uh, for the most part, these three substances showed up really as a guise to undermine law enforcement, they showed up as a labeled as bath salts, plant food, fertilizer, okay, insect repellents, research chemicals, jewelry cleaners, stain removers, also other names were ivory wave, vanilla sky, amongst many other names particular to uh, whatever the marketing uh, logistics were. And these started to show up and like I said, uh, retail shops, head shops, you know, smoke shops uh, on the internet, okay? And these were guises so that they can sort of uh, go under the radar from law enforcement, okay? And uh, in the scientific literatures and uh, some of the more formal discussions, as I said, bath salts are also called new psychoactive substances, okay? It's important to note that. Okay. In their labels, there was phrases included such as not for human consumption or for research purposes only, okay? And again, these were meant to throw off law enforcement in their attempts to uh, sort of go under the radar and get these synthetic cathinones out in the market, okay? Now, why? What are these? Uh, the goal of this is uh, another term for these were legal highs. And really, in some senses, one of the main goals was to get a cheap high to the market that mimicked stimulants like amphetamines, methamphetamines, 
ecstasy, okay, cocaine, okay, that was the purpose. We're going to get into a little bit into uh, pharmacology stuff in a moment, but uh, uh, synthetic cathinones are chemical derivatives of cathinone, which is a plant alkaloid, a natural monoamine, okay, which is also found in the body, amphetamine-like alkaloid found in the shrub of a plant that is uh, scientifically called Catha edulis, okay, and colloquially called GAT, okay, and it's been used for centuries by indigenous people in the horns of Africa and Arabian Peninsula for its psychostimulant properties, and in fact, it's deeply ingrained and embedded in the culture in those regions which itself creates uh, another uh, sort of logistical issue in the concept of trying to mitigate harm with something that is uh, appears to have uh, so much potential damage okay most of the synthetic cathinones that we know of are manufactured in laboratories or industrial settings in india okay and China, and uh, apparently that's still the case today as far as I know. If anyone knows any different, let me know. And they are distributed worldwide in that way. Getting a little bit about into the clinical pharmacology and effects these things have. Just like methamphetamines, and if you look at the structures of these things, you will see the similarities all across of the base fundamental structure of these chemicals uh, and it will start to make sense to you take a close look at them the ring structure those of you that have some uh, organic chemistry background uh, like amphetamines methamphetamines ecstasy cocaine synthetic cathinones exert their effects by interacting with the catecholamine transporter dopamine norepinephrine and serotonin which results uh, like amphetamines, methamphetamines, ecstasy, cocaine, synthetic cathinones exert, exert their effect by interacting with what's called the catecholamine transporter that's in your nervous system. The three different ones, dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. And what this results is an increased concentration of the substance in what's called the synaptic cleft, which is the area between the blue neuron and the purple neuron. And once you, the blue neuron is what is passing the stuff down, the purple neuron is what receives it. The synaptic cleft is the area in between where you see the cocaine. And if you increase that concentration, you're gonna have increased uptake in the receiving neuron and a sort of a pronouncement of the effect downstream and, and increase intensity. In this case, uh, we are showing you a, a dopamine one. However, the selectivity of each one of these cathinones for these transporters varies considerably. Uh, they work on, some of them work just on a couple of these, some of them work on all three of them, and they work in different mechanisms. Cathinone itself, the active ingredient in the shrub Catha edulis, has been on the DEA's Schedule 1 since early 90s, okay? For those of you that don't know, briefly, and we'll get into this in some other time, Schedule 1 drugs, substances, chemicals are defined, or Schedule drugs are, de or Schedule 1 is defined as a drug with absolutely no currently accepted medical or therapeutic or research uses and a high potential for abuse damage and all that good stuff okay now i'm not going to comment on uh the value of this classification especially when i'm going to give you some examples of what kind of drugs are on there heroin's on there obviously lsd's on there peyote's on there marijuana's on there uh let that stand but i just wanted to give you an idea about schedule one drug since cathinone itself the active ingredient in the catha edulis plant 
is been on schedule one since the 90s okay now now in the last video we discussed Flocka another street name is gravel and uh, this is alpha PVP again you can uh, see it and uh, chemical structures that we have uh, up and uh, we presented this as sort of the poster child bath salt okay it was sensationalized about 10 years ago as uh, by the media as it just hit the market in a way and it had this uh, odd effect on some of the users a lot of the users that were ending up in the emergency room there was a lot of deaths associated with it a lot of illness and it was uh, labeled as the zombie drug uh, because of uh, this uh, excited delirium state also that was occurring with it it was just very 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 pronounced and it gave the media opportunity to jump on this now What's interesting is Flocka uh, or Alpha PVP is what uh, in the more formal literature is considered the second generation bath salt, okay? How did Flocka come into the market? What was the impetus? And um, these issues are extremely interesting. Uh, just before that, its predecessor, which I described above, M. PV, which was a first generation bath salt, was uh, temporarily scheduled by the DEA in 2011 and permanently scheduled in, by Congress in 2012. Right around that time as this stuff disappeared, immediately Flocka declared itself, and as I discussed in the previous video, Broward County, Florida was just a nasty epidemic where uh, law enforcement and officials were uh, just hoping for crack cocaine to come back. Uh, one of them uh, was noted citing. Uh, that's how bad this stuff was and the emergency rooms were flooded with uh, issues regarding this, okay? And all kinds of sensational stories about what was going on. This stuff is really pushed as a legal alternative, not only to its uh, uh, predecessor, MDPV, but again, all of these as a legal alternative to cocaine, methamphetamines, uh, ecstasy. And what you note is that they take a strong hole in more uh, socioeconomically depressed areas as well as marginalized populations and people of color. That's important to note, okay? Uh, I wanna briefly talk, touch on a larger issue, which is quite interesting to me and it's the scheduling policies and the current American and international drug policy approaches to these substances. Uh, and I wanna hint at some of the complexities and subtleties involved with the sort of decisions that law enforcement policies take and the effects that they may have, okay? There is a general blanket approach, okay? That as soon as one of these comes out and they discover it, bam, schedule one, ban, whatever, and so forth, okay? I posit that uh, this, is, this blanket approach is thoughtless, draconian, and it may even be inhumane and worsening the substance abuse policy uh, problem, okay? Because you ban one and in half a minute, a worse one comes out, okay that was the response to your banning it and the nature of this stuff and how it's produced and how easy it is to produce and the current economic exchanges that we as a society participate in uh, the technology uh, the ease of transportation and the increasing poverty across the world i hold the position that that is not the best approach uh, to fighting uh, substance abuse across the planet, okay? Uh, I'm gonna leave it at that, okay? And just simply say that all policy, including drug policy and law enforcement policy should be driven by evidence and it should be informed by evidence for the best outcome for the individual and society. Let's go back to stimulants uh, as bath salts and use the more general term and this is important since we're covering the concept of bath salts and uh, new psychoactive substances 
the more general term in the formal literature is new psychoactive substances, okay? As, as I said, these are drugs that are uh, similar to, in their effect to amphetamine, cocaine, ecstasy, which is MDMA, and uh, they generally result in increased alertness, energy, confidence, sociability, suppression of appetite, suppression of fatigue, uh, and uh, some of the other attributes of why users take this besides the euphoria is mood improvement, uh, increased empathy, openness, uh, like I said, euphoria, uh, increased libido, but they also cause, uh, they can cause in varying degrees, anxiety, distorted perceptions, insomnia, confusion, paranoia, uh, impaired short-term memory, hallucinations, tremor, agitation, psychosis, and so forth. Uh, as far as the uh, parasympathetic nervous system, you get uh, increased heart rate, sweating, your temperature can go up. So it's all the usual uh, suspects, okay? They can come in powder, capsule, tablet, liquid, crystal form, and are primarily consumed by swallowing or snorting, as well as the, they can be injected, okay? So that's the general sort of uh, picture of the pharmacology and the reason a user would use them. Again, it's the usual suspect, the desired effects uh, are euphoria, rush, alertness, and so forth, okay? I'm not going to uh, go into the details of any uh, half-lives and time of onset and so forth because I'm covering a, a general class, okay? But we are discussing these as part of our uh, stimulant series and uh, within that is uh, we are discussing new designer drugs, bath salts, and new psychoactive uh, substances, okay? But there are other class of new designer drugs or new psychoactive substances, and they're just as concerning, and I will cover these in detail uh, once I get into the particular class of drugs. Uh, nevertheless, they are worth mentioning here because as you hear about these drugs uh, or new psychoactive substances or another type of bath salt, I don't want you to get confused. And there's a lot of laxity and looseness uh, in the use of the terminology out there. And so I just want to tell you the broad categories of these new psychoactive substances. And thus far, we've been using the term bath salts to cover the stimulant part of these, which are synthetic cathinones, which come from the real deal cathinone, the active ingredient in an African and Middle Eastern shrub called cathinoedulis. The other ones are synthetic cannabinoid receptor agonist, okay? And these are a very chemically diverse group of uh, synthesized compounds uh, often very uh, similar in the way they act on um, the 9 tetra uh, hydrocannabinoidal uh, receptor, okay? The powder is uh, typically dissolved in a solvent, sprayed on an inert plant material, and then smoked. They're often sold as commercial mixtures, and here's a name you may also know. It was around at the same time as bath salts, Spice okay, or chronic. There's other uh, forms and routes of administration, including ingestion of the pills, powders, vaping, using solutions containing synthetic uh, cannabinoids. Effects are similar to those of cannabis, euphoria, sedation, drowsiness, but they're more pronounced and sometimes unique. As I saw many cases of spice presenting to the ER in a uh, hyper paranoia state, uh, with an increased uh, sympathetic drive and anxiety, okay? So uh, uh, that's another class, okay, which we will discuss more in detail once we get into the cannabis kind of areas. Uh, there's also uh, the hallucinogen, new active, new psychoactive substances, okay? This is a diverse group of substances. They alter an indiv individual's awareness of their surroundings, okay? As well as your thought process, and perception, the way you see things. And this can lead to a substantial distortion of reality, okay? These can be divided into two main types, just like their uh, other counterpart. 
disassociative, okay? And this induces uh, euphoria alongside a feeling of sort of weightlessness, which is odd to describe and detachment from the body. So then there's the hallucinogen, uh, new psychoactive substances. These are a diverse group of substances that alter an individual's uh, awareness of their surroundings, okay? And uh, as well as their thought process and uh, perception, okay? This can lead to substantial distortions of reality. These can be divided into really uh, the two counterparts of uh, what they represent. Uh, one of them is disassociative, okay? And these induce uh, a euphoria alongside a sense of weightlessness and uh, detachment from the body. And then there is the classic hallucinogens, and uh, these produce altered perception, causing cognitive and visual disturbances and an altered state of consciousness, okay? The disassociative new psychoactive substances or designer drugs have similar effects to ketamine, which by the way is related to PCP, and uh, classic ones have similar effects or try to simulate LSD and um, uh, magic mushrooms. Now, all of these, it really depends on your physio uh, physiology and environment you take the drug in and the conditions you take it in. So these are uh, very general, okay? And this includes the duration, the intensity, uh, and type of experience you end up uh, ha having. Uh, these come in powder, liquid, capsule, blotted paper, and uh, depending on the drug, most of them are uh, swallowed, snorted, smoked, uh, and can be injected, okay, depending on what you're getting. Now, the depressant new psychoactive substances are come in two forms. Uh, one is the opiate type, and then there's the benzodiazepine sedative uh, hypnotic type, okay? Opiate ones are the fentanyl analogs, and uh, benzodiazepines have sedative, anxiolytic, hypnotic, muscle relaxant, and anti-convulsant effects, just like their counterpart, okay? One of them is phenazepam, okay? Uh, these new psychoactive substances can be uh, sold under their own name, but have been detected, okay, as, as dilutants uh, in counterfeit prescriptions, tablets, capsules, adulterated with or actually they've been mixed into when you're trying to buy illicit drugs as well, whether it's a heroin uh, or otherwise, okay? Uh, cocaine and some of the more established illicit drugs, okay? And uh, they are also mostly swallowed, injected, and uh, snorted or injected or otherwise, okay? Some of these are sold in some countries uh, as a prescription drug uh, for example, I think Japan uses one of them as uh, a prescription medication, okay? As far as the opiates goes, these are fentanyl-like analogs. One of these, carfentanyl, which is actually uh, legally manufactured as well, uh, is a, a large animal veterinary tranquilizer, okay? And also used in imaging uh, medicine uh, for, uh, as a tracer. Uh, well, we discuss these drugs and in, in other videos strictly uh, dedicated uh, to those uh, uh, drugs, to those class of drugs. Okay, so uh, that at this point, you should have a pretty strong grasp of what bath salts are, what designer drugs are. But one thing I really, really want to drive home in all of this is uh, one thing that is often missed and part of the problem here is the uh, media and uh, the sensational aspect of presenting a lot of these as they pop up, okay? The truth of the matter about new psychoactive substances is the fact that they are neither new or novel, okay? Most of these substances uh, were discovered a uh, long time ago as you, uh, uh, can you see with cathinones and what they were used for as early as I think in the late 1920s and resurfaced during this uh, sort of uh, surfacing of new psychoactive substances and bath salts uh, or their small tweaks on already familiar class of compounds, okay? 
And these are uh, the small tweaks or minor chemical alterations to an existing drug or molecule, okay? And it's done so it can circumvent uh, legal prohibition. And uh, despite, despite their claims of novelty and the news media sensational stories of violence and death of these new synthetic compounds, uh, they have found themselves really in a very interesting paradigm shift in society. And given the fact that we are in an era of increased access due to technology, shifting economic fac uh, factors, rapid transportation, and it's a good idea to have some grasp of these and what they're going on as also uh, uh, and how they're moving and how they change as also a social and political marker of the times uh, because substance abuse really is in many ways a reflection of that. I think it is to be seen in the future what role they play in uh, evolution of how we as humans consume drugs uh, given our social structures and institutions and economics and evolving technology. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you did, please go ahead and uh, press the subscribe and like button. Look at some of the other videos in this series. And if you are so inclined, please don't forget uh, Patreon.